So we are rolling, so go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Moira Arzich. I teach eighth grade English and language arts at Scullin Middle School in Naperville, Illinois. Okay, so first question. We want to understand the decisions you made in planning for this lesson and how it fits into the unit and year. How does this lesson connect to and build on students' prior skills and knowledge? We actually have four units and they work on a quarterly rotation. So we're at the beginning of our second unit of study. It's two sides to every story and we are in week three. So in planning for the lesson, I want to take into consideration where I want the students to be at the end of the quarter. They will complete a performance task. And so everything I choose to do is in an effort to give them that knowledge to build on throughout the quarter so at the end they can independently execute their performance task. What was taught before this lesson and what will come after it? Discuss the sequence of lessons that surround this one lesson. We are in Unit 3, so we have just begun um, our work. The essential question for this particular unit of study revolves around the American Civil War. So everything we are going to do is to help us analyze perspective, and that perspective is gonna be taken into account from multiple stakeholders at that time. So you'll look at the abolitionists, you'll look at slaves, you'll look at the North and the South, and how those individuals made decisions at that time based on what was happening in the country. So the beginning of the unit, we really had the students choose a historical nonfiction test, text that they're going to be reading independently, and we use that to start each day. We also had the students listen to two music selections that had to do with the North and the South's perspectives on what was happening at that time. We also included a mini research project where they were to look for music selections that showed two sides of a story. And they're actually presenting those to the class, one each day for the next um, several days. In addition to that, we started to analyze Boys' War and the students are only going to look at two chapters in that text. Chapter one, they looked at why the um, boys became soldiers. And then today's lesson was the aftermath and how the perspective of those boys has changed from the innocence that they started with to the reality of what war is actually like. Is the text used in this lesson part of a sequence of text designed to build in to build skills and knowledge? If so, please give an example of other texts that form this sequence. We use multiple texts throughout the unit. Um, as I said before, their personal reading is nonfiction um, or fiction, but it has to do with the Civil War. Then we're looking at Boys' War. The anchor text for this unit is gonna be to be a slave. We'll begin that next week. We also have text selections from John Brown, photos by Brady, um, looking at the Articles of Confederation, and analyzing works by Frederick Douglass. So they will have a wide range of examples of text to look at author's perspective as we move through this unit of study. Talk about the standards targeted in this lesson. What did you do to make this lesson reflect the full intent of the standard? In this particular standard, the students are really looking at perspective and multiple perspectives. So throughout the unit, they're actually going to analyze how different groups of people come to those perspectives and why. But in this particular text, they're actually looking at the group of soldiers and how their perspective changed from the beginning to being entrenched in the war. So rather than comparing a multiple, they're actually looking at a little narrower scope and sequence for that. All right, give me more. Which of the core action indicators do you think this lesson best exemplifies? And Perfect, why? thank you. Um, so in looking at author's perspective, it, previously we would really look at comprehension and their own takeaways as far as how text might um, connect with what they know. And 
the shift for this standard is really looking at how the author was able to execute those perspectives. So how does he choose in his writing to show that transition for the students? So they're, they're comprehending the text, but they also have a higher purpose. They're looking at why the author choose, chose to do what he chose to do. We're interested in the shifts required by the CCSS, or we're interested in how the shifts required by the CCSS are being incorporated into your instruction. Discuss how this lesson illustrates the shifts required by the CCSS. When you look at the state standards, I think the most exciting part about utilizing them is the fact that they require deeper thinking. So students are no longer able to just work on the, the initial um, attributes of Bloom's taxonomy. They're very good at giving you what you want. You tell us what we need to know and we will tell you verbatim give it right back. Here they have to analyze. So when you're really looking at those shifts, it's it's not only about the text, it's about the why behind the text. So incorporating that in their reading and then having that follow through with Socratic seminar in their discussion really gives them a deeper understanding of what they're able to do. In addition to the discussion and that collaborative process together, synthesizes information for them in such, an, such a valuable way that when they're actually asked to produce a product, their understanding and what they're able to give you is so much more intense and well-rounded. Um, it's really the light bulb going off. It really is watching them have a full understanding of what you're reading or writing or learning about. How did you teach the content of this lesson or the text prior to the CCSS? What's the same and what's different? I would have to say we really focus more on books. So when you, when you didn't have a unit of study, you had a text. So you would say, okay, we're going to do Boys' War and we're going to read every chapter and we're going to write letters from the perspective of a soldier. And we would spend weeks on that. Now it's really looking at the essential themes and the understandings you want to come away. And it's not necessarily delving into all of that background information. It's really pulling out the pertinent details. So I'm no longer teaching a novel. Um, we're looking at more of a research philosophy where you're analyzing many, many different forms of media and text and synthesizing that all together. Student engagement is crucial to the work of the CCSX. We want to understand how you ensured that all students had the opportunity to productively engage in the work of the lesson. How did you support all students in working with grade level text? For example, how did you provide scaffolding for students below grade level so they can read grade level text? We're very fortunate in this building to have um, a class to support our students outside in English language arts. So I use that particular time to either pre-read or reread text for students. It has been so beneficial to actually work one-on-one -on -one with them and make sure that they have the essential understandings. They don't have all the content, they don't have all the vocabulary. However, when they're in a group discussion with their peers, they are able to step into that conversation and provide valuable information to that group. Um, I no longer see my students as having so many needs because they are able to be productive within that setting. Adding the discussion component has been the integral piece of that for me, where the peers are actually able to say, you know, I read this, but I don't understand it. Um, as soon as one student opens up in that manner, you don't know who is going to be able to solidify their learning for them. And it frequently comes from the most unexpected, unexpected places. Um, in a traditional setting prior to this, you would never see children be able to vocalize in that manner. They would hide their misconceptions from each other and smile and nod. And here it's a framework that allows them to have that conversation so everyone walks away with an understanding of what's going on. How did you create opportunities for students who are advanced to engage more deeply with the grade level or grade level text, or above grade level text? 
typically providing um, that higher level thinking has really had my students that are above grade level struggle more than my students that are below grade level. That transformation um, I'm still working through. The students that are above grade level, everything comes easy to them. So when you ask them to provide evidence for their thinking, that's challenging for them. And I've had several of them say, well, this is hard. And I've said, I know it's hard, but I'm sure that you're gonna be able to do it. Where your lower level readers struggle every day, that's nothing new to them. We're constantly asking them to grapple with things beyond their reach. They're actually shining more than they have before in the classroom, where my higher level students that are actually asked to um, elaborate on their understandings, that's not something they've had to do before. They've always had a quick and easy answer. So for them, it's, it's much harder. It, it's a very different dynamic. How do you know the students were able to successfully respond to the text-dependent questions and tasks with precision? Did the students acquire the literacy skills addressed in the lesson? Well, let's start with the first portion again. How do you know the students were able to success successfully respond to the text-dependent questions and tasks, tasks with precision? In asking the students to annotate the text in partners, I usually check in with each, each group of readers. What I was surprised to find yesterday is um, a little bit of a reluctance to look for perspective. However, they were very eager to look for vocabulary words they didn't understand. So I need to bridge that gap to that higher level thinking. I'm thrilled that they can identify words now and they don't just gloss over them. Um, they're actually stopping and looking them up. Um, bring your own technology has been a gift in that manner because they can look it right up on their phone. In watching them discuss during Socratic seminar, that's where I look for those key identifiers that they have an understanding of what they've read. In addition to that, today, as the follow-up, they'll be um, asked to perform a writing task where they're gonna do an in-class essay on the perspectives and provide evidence and elaboration. So I'll be asking them to look for the text and cite that text evidence within their writing. Next question or the question. Are students coming in here now? Pretty close. Really? I have a sign on the door, so we should be all right for okay. it. I can go out. And Thanks, Michelle. That'd be great. Go take a stroll around we're, the building. We're almost there. You're doing good. Did students acquire the literacy skills addressed in the lesson? What did you do for students who did not acquire the literary skills addressed in the lesson? I will say out of all of my students, I think the students managed very well with the exception of one. Um, I have a student who is struggling not only with the vocabulary but the inferencing. Scaffolding was provided to this student and they're not meeting my expectations. So I'm gonna actually be seeking out more support from the special education department and the speech and language department to see what I can do to bridge that gap. Um, I'm, I've worked with this student for multiple years, so I know I know where their learning is. They're a student that's great with um, looking at informational text and great with concrete thinking, but inferencing is a challenge, and now that we're asking them to inference more and more, I'm struggling with the fact that it might um, need, she might need to be supported in a different manner. So I haven't actually figured that out yet, and I'm working on that. Which behaviors from, from core action three did students best ex exemplify in this lesson? What actions have you taken as a teacher to make that happen? I would say for me, the biggest shift, in addition to looking at why someone is writing and, and what is the intended message an author is giving, whether it's lyrics, whether it's print media, whether it's photography, is really looking at author's purpose. What, what is he trying to tell you as an audience? The other shift that I'm so excited about really is the speaking and listening shift. Um, I've stepped back in providing information and background frameworks for, for kids to a certain level 
to let them have those conversations themselves. So as they're having the conversations, I'm trying to step in and be supportive of, have you thought about this? Or are you considering all stakeholders at the table? Or are you making sure all voices are heard at the table? So increasing their ability to have a concrete discussion with each other has really been the shift that has been most powerful for me to watch. Um, raising those expectations and watching the students meet them has changed learning in such a dynamic and profound manner. It's exciting every day. Would you like to comment on any of the students submitted work? At this point in time, no, because I'll be looking at that today after they finish their in-class writing. But um, I'm pretty confident that they'll, they'll be able to execute my expectation. Great instructors are continuing. Great instructors are continuously learning. We want to understand what you celebrated in this lesson and what you would improve upon. Reflecting on the lesson, what worked particularly well and what might you do differently? I would have to say I struggled the most with their showcasing their own music. It was a piece and a selection that the entire class did not like. Um, the purpose of looking at the music and the lyrics was to be able to pull out perspectives. So students chose a particular piece and we used um, a great resource from the Library of Congress to have them analyze a song as a historical piece of information. Well, this particular selection was called Two Sides to Every Story by uh, Willie Nelson and Diane Cannon. However, it was so far removed from what they liked to listen to and the dynamic of the music was so different that they reflected that the music turned them off to such an extent they couldn't listen to the lyrics. Um, some of the song choices, especially if they're more closely related to what the genres are that the kids like, are highly successful. So this particular group stepped outside the box and um, it was shocking how much it was disliked. So I would have liked to have had that text in hand so we actually could have separated that out and analyzed the text separate of the music and then maybe talked about how those two things go together to really give an audience what the artist is intending. Um, as far as celebrations, it has to be Socratic Seminar. We really have just started with that process. Um, in setting up the Socratic seminar, I don't do it as a whole class because I'd rather have more students engaged, so I actually set up three seminars. Um, they have observers, they have rubrics that they analyze, um, their own performance, and then I usually give them a text-dependent analysis following up to see that they've gotten the information they needed. But they are really enjoying what they're talking about. Um, one of the conversations I heard yesterday had to do with why these young boys chose to go to the Civil War and why people in their world and in their life and family have chosen to go into the military. And the discussion was very impressive about these, the Civil War went for a very different reason than people go today. So they were really analyzing that. That didn't have anything to do with what I chose to present to them or the understanding I wanted them to come away with. However, I think that really enhanced their learning. Great. Last question. Do you have time to answer it? Let's go. Okay. Were there any surprises or unexpected student behaviors? No. In fact, um, I think I am very I have a very humorous class. I like to kid with the students. I like to have that interaction that's informal and formal. Um, in having the students leave, they were excited about their behavior today. If they're excited about their own behavior and excited about a lesson, I need to walk away as the proud educator of a group of students that really met the expectations that I set for them for the, for the day. Good job. Oh, good.